Hi, this is Kevin Dio from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the REL Carbon Special Subwoofer, and I have here with me John Hunter, the Chief Designer from REL Acoustics. Kevin. Okay, let me tell you something. John is one of my heroes. For everybody who's in high-end audio, when we do shows at the Consumer Electronics Show, or uh, these other shows, I sometimes partner with... But even if I'm not partnering with REL specifically, but if I'm setting up speakers, I always try to get John to come into my room because he is the master of setups. I'm telling you, and I'm not kidding, talk to anybody in the industry and John is the guy. And the thing about that is that it's that knowledge and that background, and I've known John for decades, right? It's that background that he has, the understanding that allows him to take all of that thought process and bring it to subwoofers. I've said this to you before, don't buy a subwoofer from speaker manufacturers because those companies are gonna be called ANDA companies, right? We make all these great speakers and we make subwoofers. <laughs> now that's not an absolute rule. This is not an absolute rule, but it is, it is true most of the time. And REL is a company that doesn't do in wall speakers. They're a company that doesn't do surround them sound. They're none of that stuff. They do one thing and they do it so well and that is subwoofers. And I love their stuff so much. We're one of, we do a tremendous amount of business with you and customers don't buy a subwoofer because you need more bass. Buy a subwoofer because you want better mid-range and sense of scale and musicality. And I've got to say one more thing before I turn it over. I've heard, I just talked to a customer, he goes, yeah, I want to get a sub so bad, but I, do, I can't, I don't have space to get a pair of them. I go, what are you talking about? You know, it's really popular to do pairs of subs, but that doesn't mean you don't, you know, you don't get one. It is one of the biggest deals that you can do. Forget getting a new amplifier. A subwoofer, even if you have large speakers, can be a life-changing thing. This is the new Carbon Special. It is unbelievable. And I got to ask you, John, I look at this driver and it looks familiar. Can you tell me what's going on? Sure, sure, absolutely. Thank you for that intro, Kevin. So this is actually the Mark III version of the driver. This is the latest one that's used in the G1 Mark II reference, right? It's a fantastic piece. The newer one, we've gone through and, and subtly rebalanced it. It's got a much larger surround. So we're getting into the technology of it, but the point of it is, is that this is the absolute latest technology we have in a 12-inch driver, all carbon fiber, we actually use a composite. We prefer using um, a secondary piece to stiffen up the center section. I know it's very popular for people to, to just do a cast, single cast molding. Works great, no issues with it. Probably works fine for again, conventional speaker. We're under so much stress. The pressure that builds up in this thing is such a big issue that we find it's actually much better to have a, a, a double layer composite. So by the way, just a little, little point of it and we'll get into some of the fun little details, but you'll see as you start to look around this piece, we'll spin this around for you in a moment, all kinds of little carbon fiber details. And Kevin asked me a question as we were, as we were working, is this real carbon fiber or, or is this like a, a plastic photo overlay, you know, piece that, that looks really pretty. Everything we do, if it looks like it's aluminum on some of our less expensive pieces, it's aluminum. The feet on a T9, those are about a pound and a half of cast aluminum. So if something looks like it is, it is. Uh, to me, it's duplicitous. If you've got stuff that looks, you know, you, you can chrome plate plastic these days, right? It, it's just not how I roll, yeah. won't happen. So yes, when you see details that appear to be carbon fiber, they're real carbon fiber. And I can tell you, it's a pain in the ass to work with these things. The reject rate, for, just for the cosmetics, the stuff works fantastically, right? But the levels that our customers would insist on for fit and finish to get that in carbon fiber is not easy. So it's fun. Yeah. So we'll dive in a little bit here. So what's the purpose of a carbon special? We've already got an 812. The S812 is an incredible piece. Uh, in the US, it sells for about 3,000 pounds, uh, dollars, excuse me. Uh, in the UK, it's, I wanna say around 2,700 pounds. The, the, the bottom line is that these pieces are fantastic, they're compact, they're powerful, they've got perfect filters in them that have really filled out the bottom end beautifully, have this nice little special filter that really allows this wonderful handoff between the bass and the mid-range to, to, to top end stuff. When you listen to uh, the, the modern S's versus anything that went before them in a sort of intermediate sized piece, they've got such incredible reach right up into the high frequencies, it's crazy. So with that, why do we need a carbon special? 
This was really developed for people who wanted to, in many cases even had the budget to be able to, to go out and buy a six pack of number 25s or a six pack of G1 Mark IIs. They just don't physically have the space. And, and, and nothing against the 812, uh, there is a huge jump off between say G1 Mark II at, at almost double the price and the 812. So it struck me that there was a need for something that was really an uber high performance, but compact piece. And I'm going to use the term compact a little loosely, right? This is a, I don't know, roughly 85 pound, pretty heavy beast. Uh, it, it varies from the 812. If you look at this thing and if it looks like it's just maybe a little bit deeper, it is. It's just over an inch deeper. And that was necessitated because we have so much air movement. The teal small equations dictate that we needed more physical internal environment. And, and, and you could hear it like that. Mm. We, of course, prototyped this using a standard 812 cabinet. We went through and built up special, um, there's a passive on the bottom, and, and it's, it's crazy. It's a special piece that goes 50% uh, uh, longer stroke than the one that's in the A12. The driver itself has two times the stroke of an A12 driver. Sounded pretty good. And you could hear it was just tense, right? You could never get it to just relax and bloom. And I, I you know, spent about a night just working through calculations and there's a point where you have to just let go and kind of go what's your instinct say too we managed to get it down to just a little over an inch of extra depth and when we heard the the first prototype cabin about 35 days later the way it just released everything all the big deep rolling concussive stuff just was effortless all of a sudden mm. we finally weren't fighting this cabinet so it was fantastic to have that and and be able to pull it off I mean, believe me, I was getting calculations that were like, no, no, <laughs> you need 50% more cabinet volume. It worked out great. Yeah. So here we are. Uh, the, the, the piece itself uses uh, the same 1,000-watt amplifier that we supply in the A12. Now, remember in the SA12, we specifically limit it to 800 watts. Here, it's a 1,000-watt amplifier. We we're able to open that up just a little bit more because we've got so much more power handling available in this driver. And as I said, the passive that's on the underside has a tremendous amount of stroke while staying under control. So we, we won't get specific about the wattage, but it, we, we certainly have a looser limiter built into this one. It's like having a, 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 a kind of a, a speed limiter on a car that's been modified by a tuner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes out of Porsche saying 155 miles an hour hard. And, and for you know $100 worth of tuning, you can release that thing and suddenly it's doing 183. So mm -hmm. here we are, we've got a, a, a loose limiter that lets us really plumb the depths of this thing. I, I have to tell you just a little personal story. So I bring home almost all our prototypes and I listen to them and I have a nice high-end two-channel rig. Um, when I got this piece in, uh, the, the timing was perfect. I just had to take the little Ferrari Red T9i. We'd been using that in the little in impromptu home theater that we have. And I took the, the Red T9i in for shooting. So I slipped this thing in. Oh my lord. It, it was incredible. The, the stuff that we're seeing these days, right? We're all trapped in front of Netflix or Amazon Prime, whatever it is. We're, that's our sort of our form of entertainment for video. And the things that are being built into production stuff these days is insane. It, it's got to be, some of the stuff is, is got to be plus 5, plus 6 dB, below 20 hertz. Mm -hmm. my, my, my daughter, who I swear should just become a, a, a lawyer, looks up at me at, me at one point and, and the doors and the windows were rattling. Everything is creaking in the room. And she says, have you ever considered requiring your customers to sign uh, a release form? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, so this piece, uh, you can probably hear in my voice, there's a certain amount of enthusiasm that's creeping through. Uh, we love all of our projects. We don't do them unless we, we really are mentally and emotionally invested heavily in them. This one became very special uh, along the way for both Justin and I. There's just something so magical. It's so delicate and yet so concussive at the same time. I'd like to say something about that, <clears throat> that delicacy thing. Rel's whole deal is to not do anything that's negative to the music, all right? I mean, they are the audiophile brand, period, period. And I gotta say something to those that are not aware, if you don't think you have a subwoofer out because you have a tube amplifier or something, 
Rails typically don't get hooked up that way. They use what's called a speak on connector that hooks up to the speaker taps of your amplifier. You can also hook them up line level if you choose to. And the beauty of this brand is that you're able to have individual adjustments for both high level and low level. And we're gonna teach you all of that at Upscale Audio. We'll make sure that you know what's going on, but I just don't want you to go, and eh, I can't hook up a subwoofer because I don't have a subwoofer out or because I'm an audiophile and this isn't for me. It absolutely is for you. Yeah, and if I could just jump on that for a second. So Kevin's talking about our high level connection. High level means that we're actually coming off of the output taps, for example, if you've got a tube amplifier, but the output section that drive your speakers um, and, and I want to be very clear about this. I, I, I remember this because we've gone sort of move past these basic things, but be aware, the reason that we have a thousand watt amplifier in it is we're simply taking that as a pre-signal. So when you have something like a, a Prima Luna amplifier and it's beautifully balanced, they've got that wonderful solid bottom end to begin with. Huge difference between those and uh, an awful lot of the SE amps out there. Um, and, and you listen to that, well, that's got a character to it. Right? It's got this rich fullness, this ripeness, these beautiful mid-ranges. We need to be able to build that forward into our sub. Otherwise, we can't possibly meld with your speaker. We're not trying to be something different. When you hear a system that's correctly voiced with a RHEL, it typically sounds as though your, let's say, $10,000 speakers suddenly are really, really good $25,000, $30,000 pair of speakers. And I'm not joking about that. It's an immense upgrade. And and understand that we're re really just trying to make those speakers sound like they would full range. A typical loudspeaker in a room, and this is nothing against the designers of the speakers, in order to get all the other magical things they have to do, they're having to trade off low bass. Mm -hmm. And so, the, uh, God bless them, if you know what you're doing and you set them up properly, you get this wonderfully balanced performance, right, and a big stage and all that. And what goes away? Well, you can't afford to do that and stuff your speakers into the corner, you lose all of the bottom end. You get it all the bottom and you'll lose everything else uh, mm -hmm. along the way. And what the sub does is allow that speaker to just be its sort of full range self, right? M me, if I worked out for like the next year and a half, I'd look a little bit more like my son who does work out all the time. It's like, wow, there's like super me. That's, that's it. It allows you to hear the full realization of whatever that, that system is capable of doing. But we don't draw any power. We draw zero from the amplifier itself. All it takes is just a sample of the voltage and then it amplifies. There's no drag, there's no downside to it. And like John was saying, you know, it allows you to help fix room problems and it allows your speaker to be the best speaker it can be. And again, I got to say this, and, I, and there was a guy that just brought this up because I said it, it allows you to get, and I talked about Jim Morrison being a crooner and somebody left a message on my chat said he's not a crooner. He absolutely is a crooner. And you have not heard Jim Morrison or Johnny Cash's voice until you've heard it with some, even if you have large speakers, it just helps you get that Yeah, that baritone fullness yeah. and that effortless yeah. quality. Yeah. Do you mind is, if I just spin this around a little bit and show, show them some of the other parts of it? So Kevin was asking me as we were getting ready for this, the, these are the pieces. He was like, are these, are these really carbon fiber? Yeah, they're really carbon fiber. And then we went through and sprayed them with four coats of lacquer and sanded them in between each time. So they're really beautiful. Uh, these are actually cast stainless steel. Uh, they're, they're really, really expensive to build, um, but incredibly strong and absolutely gorgeous. They're, they're then chrome plated. And you can't see the top edge, but the, the top edge is a work of art and an absolute nightmare from a production standpoint. We reject somewhere in the range of 80 to 90% of these things. Uh, don't, don't even get me started. Uh, but they're fanta fantastic. It's triple plated chrome over uh, milled. I'm, I want to say I, I get this right. So we're now using zinc because the zinc is actually a happier metallurgy with chrome. Mm -hmm. um, it allowed us to, to sidestep the, the first layer, which is copper. So we go from, from zinc directly to nickel to chrome and it cuts down the amount of times you have to handle it and the times you can wind up with little impurities getting into the final chrome finish. So it's been great. So a brief explanation of what you're seeing here, if you're a little intimidated by the first time you, you look at one of these, uh, this is all straightforward stuff. This is the input that we receive, that high level connection, so off the back of your um, loudspeaker terminals on the back of your amplifier. We just give you three simple analog rotary controls, volume, crossover, and a separate one for the point one level if you're gonna be using this in theater. Um, and you can hook it up both ways. 
simultaneously. And this is, I've got to point, i got to drive this home. This is what makes them different from every brand on the market that I'm aware of. I'm going to say one more thing. You cannot bring, before you uh, hook this up, I would suggest that you make sure that your speakers are positioned properly. So if you buy a RAL from us, make sure that you ask one of my salespeople to send you our speaker setup instructions. We're going to send that out to you, no charge. We've got two instructions, one basic, one of them for obsessive compulsive disorder people. <laughs> Set your speakers up right, then add the subwoofer. And I want to say something else. My salespeople are not on commission, so they're not going to, if you need help afterwards, we will do that. But also avail yourself to Rel's website, which has got tons of stuff, tons on of oh my gosh. great setup stuff to make your system better. So one of the fun things that I'll point out, and you may be looking at these going, what are these fixtures for? And we've got them on bottom and top. That's to allow us to securely stack these. This is a dive off the deep end, but for the ultra high end customer, for people with Rockports and Wilsons and big Focals and all that sort of thing, um, there is real merit to having stacked three high uh, in what's called a line array. Uh, and, and it just makes the entire system come alive in ways that people are, high end reviewers are battling over. So this is, is uh, the actual security stanchions that allow us to bolt two units together, there'd be another one stacked on top, and then you can see another one up here. All right, this is the short, quick tour of, of our baby, and I've got to say, this is a really, really special piece, even within the RHEL Pantheon. We've been doing this for 30 years this year, and, and within that, this is somewhere in the top five of all time. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So it's thank a, you. It's a super piece. I want to thank John for coming out and also coming to my house where we were talking about my new system in the Casa del Kevin. We had a lot of fun <laughs> with that. I love this guy and I love their products so much. So go to our website, talk to my salespeople. I promise you they're not going to try to sell you a single thing. If you buy one of these and if your wife hits you over the head with a frying pan, you can refund it with no restocking charge. I promise you. But don't forget to support your local dealers. Every town is better with a record store and a local hi-fi store but if you don't have one there we are very willing to help you out and I want to make sure that you're really happy at Upscale Audio we're going to treat your system like it's ours and I want to thank you again John thank you Kevin thank you guys also for allowing us to do what we do it's Thanks. a real privilege thank you